so in top 20, let's have a look. It's Les. So Les is the Sentinel player for Loud. He is a very young player, but he's been performing at an extraordinarily high level, in my opinion, uh, for Loud while they've been playing and dominating the Brazilian region. Um, Les might give you an indication about the full team that is on this list as well. Uh, but Les is fantastic. I think he has extremely good fragging and gets a lot of value out of that part of his position. And he's also pretty smart in how he plays too. There's not that many incredible Sentinel players here um, at the event that don't just fully play Chamber. And even some of the people that do play a lot of Chamber get kind of booted out of their role sometimes for the Star Jet as well. So it's a weird time to be a Sentinel, right? So it's a pretty odd time to be a Sentinel player. Um, but I think less you should absolutely have your eyes on him. Uh, he's extremely talented, extremely talented. So, uh, number 19. Let's have a look at who that one is. Number 19 is Crashies. I think Crashies has had a reasonable year. He's had some maps where he's looked absolutely dominant. He's had some expansions to his agent pool. Um, he's played some Viper. He's played some Breach. He hasn't looked insane this year, though. He hasn't looked unbelievable. Um, whereas in the past, I think he was the benchmark by which all other initiator players were ranked. To me, that is no longer the case. I think there are other initiator players who have demonstrated better flexibility than Crashies and more impact on some of the other roles outside of Sova. But Crashies also is still good enough to make a list like this. He is still a phenomenal player, a, a massively, massively good player. Number 18. Now, I really struggle to place this player. I've put Kesnit down here at number 18. And I feel like it's a little low. But here's the reason. Kesnit's a phenomenal player, but I think his performance at this event is going to be hampered by the fact that the roles he's currently playing on the team are not going to lead him to success. His KO, in my opinion, doesn't look that great, and he is the flex player for the team. He's not really their primary fragger. I, I mean, kind of is. He plays Jet for them on two of the maps. His Jet doesn't also look that great. I think that's going to end up being a bit of a flaw for him, too. Um, and I, I think... Also, stuff like the Phoenix, while he does frag out super hard on it within the Latam region, I think that's going to end up causing difficulties for the rest of his team. Now, is any of this really Kesnit's fault? No, I don't think so, because really he's doing his best job with, uh, I think the primary duelist player, Nags, on his team is um, a bit of a burden for Kesnit to bear. Nags really only steps up in either like portions of a map portions of a series he doesn't really have the big impact that you want from that like jet and a little bit of chamber player so i think kesnit while when he plays the roles that he plays like let's say kesnit on raise kesnit on raise would be in the top 10 kesnit for the entirety of his agent pool right now across all of the maps that uh, crew are going to be forced into playing i think is going to look significantly weaker than his peak performance his peak is still going to be nasty though if you catch this guy on the right map holy fuck he is going to farm so i found it difficult to really rate kesnit he has to be on the top 20 list i think but i think this is going to be his i mean he hasn't really played a huge amount of events but i think this is going to be his weakest event um because of the problems that crew are currently going through it doesn't mean he as a player is poor but he as a player within the context of the role he's going to be playing for this event i don't think he's going to be as impressive as he was last time so i understand that this looks like a really low position to put kesnit um and i still rate the guy but i don't think he's in a position to succeed number 17 i've got sassy here and again, that might be considered a bit low by a lot of people. But I think Sassy is a phenomenal player. But I've got the hot take currently that Sassy is not as important for the team's success as the other people on Loud that I've ranked above him. And the reason for that being that Sassy, because he's now on such a talented team, appears to have taken a bit of a step back even in terms of his aggression and like how he's controlling the game. 
And he's he's not the kind of player that's going to be like Trent getting fucking straight into the trenches, finding you those amazing uh, turning point kills in a round. Sassy is insanely good for the kills he needs to get towards the late round. His utility usage is fantastic. He's just a de facto excellent player. But when you see some of the, like if you're comparing him, for example, to uh, Trent, I think Trent's got at the moment such an outrageously hot hand that delivers his team a massive amount of those crucial kills in the round. Sassy doesn't have to do that because he has other players on the team that are doing that for him as well. Will he step up at Alan? Yeah, absolutely. Will he be the player that maybe like has the highest rise against better opponents? Yeah, maybe. Number 16, Mystic. I think Mystic had a really poor champs performance, but his online performance heading into that and his online performance at the beginning of 2022 has been fabulous. It's been absolutely fabulous. He's certainly one of the best Smokes players in the world right now. He's able to play whatever's required and his um, timing on being able to support the rest of his team and be that like perfectly positioned supportive player at all times is just excellent. He's also mega clutch, similarly to somebody like Sassy. Um, but the the role that he occupies on this team is to make use of the space that somebody like Durka gives him. So, you know, the, there are different roles, I feel, the way that I model Fnatic. And it's like, Boaster's the IGL, and also the person that sets up Durka to take the space. Durka entries and takes a lot of that space, and it's Mystic's job a lot of the time to scale in behind Durka, hold the space, and either trade out, uh, get, you know, get, get kills on people trying to contest that space, that kind of thing. I think he's amazing at that. So, yeah, de definitely deserves to be on this list. You could argue he's a little overrated here, maybe, being above people like Sassy or Kesnit, but I think he's an excellent player, and I, I think the supportive element to the way that he plays, the timing, the positioning, lack of being punished, all looking pretty amazing right now. All right, number 15. Hoodie for G2. Hoodie is a glue player for G2. And he also low-key frags. He is a very uh, skilled player. He's flexible. He has been an enormous addition to G2 in helping them uh, get, into, get into the winning positions that they need to get into. The impact that he has is frequent and large. He's been playing very, very well. Number 14, Valen. Now, I don't think that Valen is a better player, hands down, than Hoodie, Mystic, Sassy. You know, even Kesnit if he was on the best possible role. But what Valen has been able to achieve with the guard, IGLing, young player, not very much experience before, and he also frags? Holy fuck, this guy's important to guard's success really important um and I, he's not the kind of like uh, at least as far as i'm aware he's not the kind of massive micro caller that somebody like uh, boaster has previously been or you might think of i don't know uh you know the fns mastermind kind of stuff you know it it does seem to be a bit more of a shared load on the guard in terms of a lot of the ideas coming from mce and the rest of the players on the team being very good at being able to um, contribute as well. But I think Valen deserves major, major props for being the leader of a team that's able to get to this point, being able to keep the team composed, keep the team headed in the right direction. This team doesn't play a sloppy style. They are all drilled, disciplined, excellent at being able to adapt. And did I mention, he frags the fuck out as well. Valen is a really good fragger when it comes to IGLs as well. I think, I think Valen's extremely valuable to the guard's success, which is why he's ranked pretty highly here, even above players where I think they have more impact in the server. So, number 13 on my list. I have Forsaken. Via the eye test, they look absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. If you watch APAC games and you watch Paper Rex, holy Farmville, Forsaken is insanely good. Insanely good. But... When he actually played at Berlin, he had 0.25 first deaths per round. 
That means one in every four rounds, the guy is just dead. And, okay, the stat doesn't actually tell you he got nothing done. But when I remember watching the games, he got nothing done in a lot of those situations too. So this is where the eye test and the stats would indicate he actually belongs higher up this list. And yeah, on the other side of this too, he also is incredibly valuable in providing these niche um, agent selections to Paper X. He plays the Neon for them. He plays, obviously, the Jet. He plays the Yoru for them as well. Um, and this is a big part of how Paper Rex is currently winning, playing extremely fast and aggressive early rounds, uh, putting a lot of um, responsibility in Forsaken Sons to open things up. But again, I, I struggle to rate him higher than this because I don't think he's going to be able to carry that level of dominance through to Reku. So that's why I know a lot of you will be like, who mega lolling? Because APAC doesn't get very much viewership. Just trust me, this guy is fucking cracked. He just might not be able to do it at Reykjavik. Above him, though, in 12th, is Victor. I'm, I'm very high on Victor heading into this tournament. I think he has had an extremely good performance picking back up the main, uh, the main duelist role for the team. Vic is better than Crashies? I think at the moment he is, yeah. I think at the moment he is. I think historically, Crashies has absolutely been better. This year, Victor has been more important to their success than Crashies has. I would say that. Absolutely, I would say that, Space. The, the reason being is that he's just playing a much more important role right now for the team. He has tons more responsibility on his shoulders, and Crashies hasn't been playing like the same god-tier performances he was putting up in 2021. Really, I think the KO that he's added into his game has been phenomenal. Phenomenal! As much as Crashies carries games whenever you get him onto Sova on Ascent, Victor's KO has been lights out! And that was never something that was in his game at all. He was still a decent player, but around the time of Champions, I know he had COVID, but he still wasn't looking like... His agent pool looked wonky. He didn't really have any games where he was on that primary duelist role and he could, he could take over. He certainly has had those games with the entry role, getting frags, carrying his team on his back this time. And then also, his KO has been such a massive addition into this team's um, toolkit that's really important. So, 11th. Let's have a look at 11th. 11th is Sire player. I think Sire has been pretty fantastic. Main duelist player. Plays the jet. Plays the raise. Mega impact. Very clutch. Improvisational talent is fantastic too. He has been very, very good for this team. Um, he hasn't been unbelievably dominant in the same way that some other primary duelist players have been dominant in this tournament though. So while you might, a lot of the NA fans are going to be like, what the fuck, not in the top 10? What the fuck, not in the top 10? When you're comparing him to, and listen, these might be a little bit spoily, but when you're comparing him to the best players on that main duelist role coming out from, uh, coming out from Fnatic, coming out from Loud, coming out from DRX, those players are having absurd impact um, that even surpasses the way that Sai is playing right now. And part of that might be because they have weaker regions, but I don't believe that's the case for EMEA at all. And Aspas and RB are fucking phenomenal. And you underrate them at your own peril, NA fans. So let's crack into the top 10, shall we? There'll be a familiar face here. It's RB. Like I said, I think RB is a fantastic player. He plays the jet, he plays the raise, he plays the... Uh, um, the hard entry role. He is so, so much better than he was when he was playing initiator for this team. And this may end up being a bit foolish, me having RB above somebody like Sire. But I think... I think it can pay off here. I think RB on Duelist has shown enough talent across the entire time that I've been watching Vision Strikers and DRX play that I would rate him above Sire. I think the Guard have a better system they have a more complete game. They're a better team. But that doesn't mean that all of their players are better than the players on DRX. And I think RB, in, both in terms of how he makes his individual decisions and his fragging, uh, might be a tad stronger than Sire is. But I'm not too confident on that. I think they're pretty comparable, but both very good. Unveil number nine, digging into the top 10 here. This is where I've got Aspas. This is where I've got Aspas. I think he is a beast. He's fucking phenomenal. He frags like a demon. 
He plays everything they want them to play. He's very young and inexperienced. And maybe he won't live up to the hype this time around. But he is fucking nasty. He's nasty. Now, you might also be thinking, though, all right, I've got him rated in the top nine, but I've got him underneath two players on Loud. What the hell is going on there? The reason being, I think Loud do an excellent job setting up Aspas, and the two players that I think are most important to Loud's success are two of their supportive players. I think the reason that Loud is such an amazing team right now is not because Aspas is the best duelist in the region. I think it's because they have the best supportive cast and the best team system in the region. And that comes from the other players, not necessarily coming from Aspas. That's why I've rated those players extremely high. There are some teams that are really, really driven by their duelists just going dumb, hard, unbelievably, mega stupid crazy. Like Fnatic. But also, Fnatic are really good at being able to put that player in position and capitalize on the space, which is why I gave so much credit to Mystic for being able to do that. But I think Aspas has an extremely, extremely talented supportive cast, and that is the currently making the difference for this team. That's the way that I'm thinking about Loud right now. Number eight, let's have a look. This is where I put Pankata. So I only put him a spot above Aspas, but I think Pankata is so good and very underrated right now. Who Megalol's coming out in the chat? Who Megalol's coming out in the chat right now? Dude, Pankata is unbelievably good. His fragging is off the fucking charts, and his read of the game is extremely strong, and he has such a high impact from what is normally quite a low impact role, especially with Astra not even being played this much. If you haven't heard of this guy, just wait and see. That's all I can tell you. Wait and see. For people like Mystic, though, and people like Pankada, I am very high on these two players. I think these two are the best Smokes players coming into the event right now. And by the way, I'm not on board. I'm sure you've watched the most recent plat chat. I'm not on board with Loud winning the tournament or being favorites for the tournament. I think they've got a dark horse chance. But I think pound for pound, they are currently the most skilled team at the tournament. That doesn't mean they're the best, but I think they're the most skilled team at the tournament uh, across the board. I think DRX is another decent shout for another team that's extremely, extremely skilled, but not likely to win the tournament. These things are not the same, okay? These things are not the same. So let's have a look. Number seven. This is where I've got possibly my most controversial take of the entire list. <laughs> there's some W's in there and there's some fucking, you've got to be trolling Omega lols. Let me at least give my case, chat. All right. This is a bit of like a meta driven argument here. The way that I see the meta right now, previously I was assuming your flex player was going to have to frag pretty hard. Like at the beginning of 2022, I was thinking about the way that like Cloud9 plays, for example, where they have this flex player being a very, you know, duelisty kind of role. But actually, the teams that I see that have found the most success are the ones that have a crazy primary fragger and then an extremely intelligent flex player that's being able to fill a huge variety of roles and provide that flexibility to the team in terms of the different comps that they can run while supporting that primary duelist to the absolute best of their ability. And Boaster doesn't frag. At least he frags more than he did in the past, but he doesn't frag that much. I mean, look at where his ACS was at, right? He sat down here at like the fucking bottom five in the tournament for his online fragging. But I think Boaster has been insane recently in terms of providing constant value in the rounds. Not only does his team play an extremely, it's not necessarily drilled, but intelligent. I think intelligent is the word that I want to use here. Fnatic play a very intelligent style of Valorant. They implement a lot of uh, interesting fakes into their game. They have some set execs. They have um, excellent spacing and timing on their trades. They, they've got down all of the basics and they also have a bunch of creative stuff that they add on top of that. And I think a lot of credit has to be given for Boaster for doing that. Not only is he the person that's going to be involved in like 90% of the fakes that they run, I'm sure he's comming them to the team as well. When you're looking at how Durka is supported, Boaster's impact is massive. He has so many different set ways of being able to throw a flash for Durka to peek off, get a knife that's unbreakable that gets them the perfect info in the middle of the round. I think he's put a lot of work in recently and is an extremely smart flex player. And if you're comparing him to the other flex players that are in the tournament, I think he's up there. 
towards the top because there are other people that frag harder than him but don't play the same amount of roles or make the comps really poor for the team or don't actually support and just play stuff like a duelist i understand that this is going to be a controversial one because he just doesn't frag that hard but i think so much of Fnatic's success is underpinned by boaster and you could have said that that was true before he moved to flex but i think it's now it's in the server as well so let's take a look then at number six so number six is buzz buzz is the biggest tool that drx have going for them to make it deep in the tournament the reason being that he can outperform most sentinel players at the event by a massive margin by a massive massive margin buzz is the biggest like meta thing also that they can lean on in terms of having you know a nasty nasty chamber a lot of the people that have played quite a bit of chamber have a either player that isn't a god at that position or a messier team system like liquid have a pretty damn good player at that position but just a, a bit of a mess right now and and then a lot of the minor regions are still using a sh just a fuck ton of cypher too so it feels like a lot of the teams heading into Reykjavik are either ignoring chamber or their chamber players aren't that great buzz yay mix well as well can have some serious impact if they start performing to an, an extraordinary level number five i'm sure you can tell that there's going to be a mad controversial pick in here i'd call it boaster-esque you know this is where i've got sad art. and this i don't personally view this as as bad as boaster but maybe some people will here's why i think sad belongs up here i'm not going to rehash the entire thing but it's a very similar argument to boaster being at that kind of level i think the impact he has from the flex position is extraordinary he also igls and he is by far and away i mean chat there is no comparison between sadak's igling and the second best igls in the whole of the latam region i mean i'm including crew in there as well with klaus there's no comparison sadak is clearly hands down the best igl in the entirety of south america and it's not close it's not close you, when you combine that with the fact that again he's not playing this like frag heavy duelist flex but he actually does frag really heavy too he frags way better than somebody like boaster does and that allows him to even like do weird shit like playing the raise on split loud are the most talented roster at this event that doesn't mean they're gonna win but loud are the most talented roster at this event and i've watched a lot of vods of all of these teams playing and i really really believe that doesn't mean they're gonna win but i believe it a lot of the same arguments apply here i'm not going to run through all of the different shit but sadak insanely good igl especially considering the region that he plays in he is way better than the other igls in the region frags significantly harder than you know your boaster your fns frags harder than valin i believe although i haven't run the numbers on that but i think he does via the eye test it seems like he does who are the other igls that frag at this event who are the other like high impact fragging igls i guess klaus is decent but sadak's better shandy yeah shandy nookie ah oh, shit i forgot to put nookie on my list oh dude chat i'm so dumb i forgot to put nookie on the list oh i'm so stupid oh i'm so dumb i'm so dumb <laughs> okay number four is yay now you could make an argument for putting yay higher than this but i would disagree with you there are three people in this tournament who are having more impact in their games than yay is and one of them is from north america but in order to really discuss that i kind of have to show you the people that he's competing against because yay is phenomenal you know the top four are just outrageously outrageously good players and then five through eight <clears throat> I'm giving a huge amount of credit for the way that they play supportively, the way that Sada can boast are IGLing. Number three, I'll show you. It's Trent. I've got Trent above Ye here. And let's let's talk a little bit why. The reason that I've got Trent and Ye uh, so high up the list for starters, they have unbelievable impact for their teams. I have Trent at number three here. So why do I have Trent higher than I have Ye? Because I think that Trent's position that he plays on the team, most initiator players cannot put themselves into position to get as much impact in the round as Trent does. And he's not just doing it by running at people and killing them, but he is also running at people and killing them. He, he runs at people, he kills them, he gets almost all of the most important kills in the round are gotten by Trent. I, I don't know what stat you could even run to try and support this, but the mid-round crucial kill stat. But just from the eye test, it feels like Trent is constantly getting the kills that have massive, massive impact. He also is fabulous with his utility. His ults are amazing. 
His play outside of Sova is incredible. When he has a bad map, everyone in the community talks about it. He had one bad map this year, that I can remember at least. He had one bad map, and everyone started saying, Oh, is this the end? Is this the end? Is, is Trent not good anymore because he had one bad map? Is this the end of his, you know, fucking honeymoon run? Is this where the inexperience shows? Do you guys know how many maps he's played so far this year? He's played like 66, and he's had two bad maps? And in all of the other maps, he like is good for 20 kills. He's fucking crazy, man. I think Ye has done the right thing this year in slightly taking a step back. He's, it's not like he plays a more supportive role, but there are certainly a lot of maps now in the optic pool where Victor is the one that goes and takes space on the Neon, on the Rays, and then Ye works with that space. Uh, Ye is still their star player on Haven, even though it's Victor that's taking the space for Ye. And then Ye, with all of that room to play the chamber, goes fucking dumb hard. I, I still think that Ye's a, a fucking phenom, but I think Trent is just providing that much extra little bit of impact for the guard right now. Durka said, let's unveil number two and number one at the same time. So fuck it, let's do it. Here's my number two and number one player for Masters Reykjavik 2022. It's Nuki and it's Durka. And in the end here, I went with Nuki at the number one position because... His IGLing for G2 and the way that he's crafted these playstyle of the team around him in a lot of situations has led to a phenomenal revival for this squad. Nuki has blasted on G2. And not only is that because he just frags super fucking hard, but he's incredibly smart in terms of how he takes the fights. He's flexible for the team as well. He plays both primary duelist and the fucking initiator for them as well. Um... He's a nutcase. He's an absolute nutcase. But I, I must say, I was considering putting Durka at the number one position because I think Durka... I, I think Durka is the best duelist at the moment in the game. Um, and I think it's a massive, massive blow for Fnatic losing him. If you look at any stat, I mean just any stat, I'm not even going to mention what the stat would be, but any stat, Durka's going to be blowing it out of the water. He's playing Jet for the team, he's playing Raze for the team, he goes dumb hard on both, and he has the responsibility on Fnatic of having to take all of the opening engagements, and he wins an outrageous amount of them. Now, Durka's performance in those final two games, right? Yeah. The final two matches in EMEA were not that great from Durka. It was a massive drop-off compared to what he'd been able to put up in the group stage and their qualification game against, uh, against Mech. Um, but... I also have seen Durka at LAN before, and I've seen Nuki at LAN before as well, actually. And both of these players go dumb stupid at LAN, especially Durka. I mean, if you look at what he was like at Champions before the event, and then at the event, part of this was because Fnatic got their shit together for Champions and actually started implementing some good strats. Now, Durka might end up actually having the biggest fall off this list. <laughs> After having been the most underrated player for Champions, he might be the most overrated player here uh, because Fnatic might not even get to groups. Uh, might not even get out of groups. And then Durka wouldn't play, and then it's very difficult to rank a player in the top 20 if they didn't play. Um, so hopefully Fnatic don't just shit the bed. Uh, hopefully Fnatic don't just shit the bed. And they manage to get out of their group, and Durka can play. And then, I'm sure Durka will pop off. Now, as for the Marved pick, um, because people in the chat are like, what, no Marved, no Marved. Yeah, I don't have Marved on my list right now. And one of the reasons for that is, I think he's currently being spread a bit too thin. And I think that the biggest thing he was adding to this team was his insanely good Astra. I think Marved had a fantastic, fantastic Astra. And I think Marved losing the Astra has meant that the team now just puts him on a range of different stuff. It puts him on all sorts of different things. And while he's still pretty smart in how he plays, and he still frags fairly decently, I don't think he's got that perfect positioning, perfect supportive gameplay like Mystic has, for example. I don't think he has the, um, the batshit fragging of somebody like Mako, for example, too. Um, and similarly for Pancada as well. I think Pancada gets way more important kills in the middle of rounds than Marvt is doing right now. I think when you consider the Smokes players, Marvt has relatively fallen down the list with the loss of Astra, more so than a bunch of other players, actually. Yampi mod check, Nevera mod check, Scream mod check, Mix 1 mod check, EMEA players getting shafted for no reason mod check. Okay. 
tell me you've never watched any Liquid games recently without telling me you've never watched any Liquid games recently. Have, did, did, you, did you just stop watching them at the end of 2021? Did you just literally stop watching them at the end of 2021? Their players are in horrible form right now because the team is running around like a headless chicken. If they fix it for the LAN, then yeah, those players are talented and can find success. But within the last three, four months, there is no shot that, he, that those players are, are up there. And as for Mixwell, I was, I was really fucking sweating putting Mixwell on this list. I really wanted to put Mixwell on this list, but spoiler alert, he's not there. He's not in the top eight. But I really, really wanted to put Mixwell towards um, the, like, 15 to 20 position. But I... I... I feel like Mixwell's performances have been very... very... um very recent heavy like the, the, the i think there's a big recency bias with wanting to put mixwell super high up the list because his group stage performance and the early playoffs performance were really passive and really low impact but it's not recency bias if he continues it and he's just figured something out about how to play the role so I think it's very possible. Someone just said in the chat, Mixwell is this year's Durka. I think it's really possible that Mixwell is this year's Durka chat. I think it's very possible. Very possible. Because um, G2 have just been looking better and better and better. They have been improving and improving and improving. And part of what's improved has been Mixwell's chamber. But th if I'm taking the whole of 2022 into account, I can't justify putting him over a lot of the other players on the, on the list. So what I mean, chat, what I mean by Mixwell being this year's Durka, I don't mean he's going to be the best player at the event. I mean he's going to be the player that I've underrated the most. I'm not saying he's going to dominate the fucking tournament like Durka did at Champions. That's not going to happen. Clueless. I don't think that's going to happen. But I am saying he could be the player that I've underrated the most. Quick question, where would you rank Jonah P? Literally plays every agent for the guard. Uh, Jonah P was one of the players that I had on my, like, you know, consideration for the bottom spots, but he ended up getting pushed down a little bit. Um, he ended up getting pushed down somewhere to... I don't... I didn't actually do the rankings for 20 to 30, but he would be somewhere in that, like, 20 to 30 list, I think. Because he's a good player, and he really is valuable in terms of his flexibility to the team. But the value that he gets in the server is more to do with being that, like, fill player rather than the actual, like, you know, role that he plays with either his rifle or his utility compared to the other people that are on the squad. Because, for example, someone in the chat just asked, why isn't Avova on there? Okay, let's just compare the Smokes players, right? So I've got Pancada, I've got Valen, I've got Mystic, three Smokes players on my list. Um, Avova plays Smokes and he plays a supportive Smoke as well. But I don't think he has as much impact for his team as those three Smokes players have for their team. I don't think Avova does as much uh, for their success. For example, I mean, all the reasons that I listed for the Smokes players that I have on my list, they're, they're either fragging exceptionally well, making very few mistakes, which I think was a big problem with Avova when he played against Liquid the first time around, was the way in which he was adapting very very rigid kind of player. I think a lot of these people have bigger jobs, like Valin, for example, his job is much bigger because he's the IGL, and Mystic's job is to go and really be that, like, space preserver for Fnatic. All in all, guys, there are some outrageously talented people that are heading into, but, uh, heading into Reykjavik, and what I tried to do with this list was really balance it much more than just who are the best fraggers. So I tried to give, you know, IGLs a lot of credit, <clears throat> the people that play important supportive roles for the teams, not just every supportive player. My, my driving question when I was trying to make this list is, how important are these players to their team's success? And that's why people like Sadak, Boaster are so fucking high up this list, because I think they are absolutely integral to their team's success. And I think thinking about things in that way, how important is this player to their team's success? I think having that question be your driving force um, helps mitigate some of the, like, just entry player bias, you know, duelist player bias 
that creeps into all of these lists because for for absolutely outrageous talents like Durka or Nuki when he's playing the Rays for the team or or the Jet actually. Um, but anyway, for both of those players, yeah, they are outrageously talented players and add such extra impact to their team that they wouldn't even be the same teams without them. But for other people that play the entry role for their team, but they could swap out a different duelist in the region or somebody that was, you know, on a different team that's performing pretty well. And they could probably have pretty similar results. Uh, but that's not the case for the, these players in the top 20, I believe. I think they're extremely integral, integral players. I wanna take you for a ride. I wanna take you for a ride.